So this problem says we have a particle of mass m and charge q is so moving in a region where we have uniform electric field as well as magnetic field. So let us say what we have. So uh, we can make the diagram first. This problem says let us say this is my x axis in this direction we have velocity we'll discuss this is my y axis and this is my z axis so let us say in this direction we have electric field as well as magnetic field both exist in this direction they are parallel to each other now question says at t equals to 0 the velocity v naught of the particle is perpendicular to the electric field. So we have a, a particle that is given a velocity v naught. So this particle at t is equal to 0 let us say at origin and this has been given a velocity v naught perpendicular to the electric field. So this is my electric field and this is my magnetic field. So this is in the y direction and velocity is in the x direction. Now we have to assume that v is much much less than c and so that we, don't, we are not entering the uh, space of relativity find the velocity of v of particle in time t. So what we have to find is we have to find velocity of part particle as a function of time. So at after any time t what is the velocity? This we are want to find out. And now we have to express the answer in terms of velocity vector v naught e and b. So let us try this one how we will proceed. You see it's easy. If there is no magnetic field, so let us decompose this problem into two parts. So first part, if there is no magnetic field, only electric field. So if I say, uh, if there is one electric field is there, so I can say only electric field, only E, no B. This means, now if I leave this particle here, there is a force in this direction q into e. So what is the force? So force will be q into e. So this is the force on particle. What is the acceleration in the y direction? So this is my y axis. So I can say this force in the y direction. So acceleration in the y direction I can calculate. That is nothing but q e divided by m. So this is the acceleration in the y direction. So I can calculate velocity in the y direction. So Vy is equals to u, initially u in the y direction is 0 plus a into t. Now a is nothing but q e by m and this into t. So now I know what is the velocity in the y direction. This is simply Vy is equals to q e by m into t. And now the e vector and y vector both matches. So simply if I write q e vector, so this means it will give you the velocity in the y direction that is with a vector sign. Now let us say if I have only magnetic field, no electric field. So this time I am decomposing the problem. If I have only magnetic field and this time no electric field. So electric field is 0 this time. What you will have? What kind of motion you will have? Try to analyze. You see uh, here we have if I leave this particle with velocity v not in this direction. And there is a magnetic field in the upper direction. So magnetic field also in the upper direction we have. So there will be a force on this particle Q V cross V. So V is this side, V is up. So Q V cross V will come outside the plane that is a z direction. You can verify yourself using the right handed thumb rule or you can verify yourself. So if you if you move your finger from V to V, so this is thumb if you move from V to V, the finger will come outside. Are you getting or not? So thumb will come outside. So velocity vector and electric field are oriented in this way so force will be oriented in the z direction so now i know so magnetic force so in this case magnetic force is oriented in the z direction magnetic force is acting along the z direction is acting along the z direction along z axis are you getting it? so this is positive z axis so this is acting along the positive z axis. What is the magnitude? Simple. That is QB cross V. So VF is equals to Q V cross V. And then initially this will be V naught. Now I am only interested in the magnitude part. So I can write force magnitude. This is equals to QBB. And V is basically V naught. And this is acting along 
forced in z -ax direction so this is along z axis along z axis now you see what will happen if you have this force so this part will come this side and if you know have if you don't have any electric field only have magnetic field so what will do this part will basically do a SHM so this will come here and so not SHM it will move in a circular path so this will come here and this will follow something like this so this will complete a circle again in XZ plane so this will move so if I have something like X and Z so this is my X and this is my Z plane you see t equals to 0 this particle is here and t is equals to 0 plus the force is acting along the z direction so what will happen you try to analyze so this will force will come this side and this force is this side and now it will move so slowly slowly it will complete a circle are you getting or not let us analyze the motion so initially this particle has been thrown in the x direction and the force is acting in the z direction so what will be the motion and I know this has to be have a circular motion so it will deflect something like this so initially it is thrown in the x direction so after some time it will be here after some time it will be here here so it will follow a circular path and this will come along the same line so this is the circular path you will have are you getting or not so basically it will make a circle in x z plane initially it is thrown this side so it will deflect in the z direction so it will follow a circular path in x z plane so circle is in x z plane so if i see the same thing so x z plane it has to follow a circular path in x z plane and the motion is from here to here so you have initially x equals to 0 so particle is moving in this direction so this means x to z so this is going along the x direction and then it is going along the z direction so the particle is something like moving something like this so this point so i can make and finally it has to come up to this point so this is the motion in xz plane simple so this is the motion you see this is not perfect circle it has to be perfect circle so this is the motion now we can calculate uh, what is the time period so at any point of time this particle is here so let us say at any time t this particle is here and the velocity is along the tangent direction if we calculate what is the angle made by this with the x axis and we can calculate what is the x velocity what is the y velocity only thing is i have to calculate this angle theta now you see uh, this is basically revolving let us say with radius i know radius is mv by qb and time period i know that is 2 pi m by qb so basically now i can calculate omega what is the angular velocity by which it is moving so time period is nothing but omega by 2 pi so from here i can calculate omega that is 2 pi into t Ah, sorry t is equals to 2 pi by omega something wrong so this is 2 pi by omega so now i know what is omega omega is nothing but 2 pi by t so if i plug this value 2 pi by t and t is nothing but 2 pi m by q b so 2 pi m by q b so you have omega that is nothing but qv by m qv by m so now if this at this point is moving in a circle with an angular velocity omega so what is the angle made by the center by this particle so what is this angle at any time t so now i know this angle has to be omega into t so theta is equals to acceleration is zero omega t plus half alpha t square alpha is 0 so theta made by this point this point that is a moving charge particle at any time t is omega into t so now this theta i know this theta is omega into t and now this theta and this theta is equal you can prove yourself this line is perpendicular over this line and this line is perpendicular over this line so this is my omega into t now i know everything so this is my velocity v and this angle is theta so what is vx v cos theta so vx is 
V cos theta. And I know the initial velocity is V naught velocity does not get changed only the direction changes. So, V x is V naught cos theta and theta is nothing but omega t and where omega is given by this formula q v by m. So, this is V x. What is V z? So, V z is you see this is V naught sin omega t. So, this is sin theta V x is equals to V sin theta sorry V z is equals to V sin theta and theta is omega t. So, I can plug this value and V is V naught which remains constant in circular motion. So, V naught sin omega t. So, this is the velocity in the x direction. Now, if I superimpose these two situations, so what we have? So, we have situation something like this. If there is no electric field, no, no magnetic field, only electric field, this charge particle will move along the y direction. It is here, here, here and the velocity is given by V y. So, this is x, this is y. So, if there is only electric field, you have electric field but no magnetic field. This time, no magnetic field, a motion is a straight line and velocity is given by Q e by m into t. So, Q e by m into t magnitude wise. So, this magnitude of this is Q e by m into t in the y direction. If you have only this time only magnetic field, no electric field. Uh, so, if you have only, so this is your x axis, this is your y axis and this is your z axis. If you have only magnetic field, no electric field. So, this time no electric field. Of course, electric field and magnetic field both are in the y direction. So, in this case again, this is B is in the y direction, electric field in the x direction. Sorry, this is in the y direction, again this is in the y direction. So, we said in this case, you have a motion that is in x y plane. So, you have somewhere here. So, the motion is in x y plane, circular motion in x y plane. And we shown velocity of x component of velocity and y component v x is given by v naught cos omega t. So, v x is basically okay let me put this dots here. So, v x is given by v naught cos omega t and v z is given by v naught sin omega t. So, this is v naught sin omega t. Now, what will happen if I apply both? So, now third situation, we apply both. That is superposition principle because B does not affect electric field and electric field does not affect the magnetic field motion. So, these two motions are independent motions. So, we can apply superposition principle. So, if we apply superposition, so if we apply superposition, so if we apply superposition, what I will have? So, if we apply superposition, I can write total velocity that is nothing but Vx plus Vy plus Vz are getting a lot. So, Vy we already know that is Qe by m into t. So, Vy is nothing but Qe by m into t and this is Qe. So, Vy I am writing. So, let us say first write Vy. So, I can write Vy. So, this is i vector, this is z vector and this is k unit vector. So, I can write vy z plus vx i plus vz k. vy is equals to q e by m into t. So, q e by m, q e by m into t. So, this is vy z vector plus what is vx v naught cos omega t v naught cos omega t and this is i vector what is vz v naught sin omega t v naught sin omega t and this is k vector now things are easy and you can basically write z vector and e vector if i multiply e into z so this becomes e vector so this is q t by m and this becomes e into z that is vector e. So, this is unit vector. 
because E vector is along the Z, J direction. E vector is along the Z direction. So, I can multiply. Now, what is this? I, what is I vector? I vector is same as initial velocity vector, V naught vector. So, I can write V naught into I is simply V naught vector. So, this is V naught cos omega t plus. What is vector k? So, vector k is nothing but, so you have V naught, this is V. So, V naught cross B is k, j vector, z vector or k vector. So, you can say V naught cross B is k vector. I can write here itself. So, what is unit vector in the k direction? So, V naught cross B or E you can also write divided by magnitude of V naught cross B. So, this will give you the k vector, V naught cross B. So, I can write this vector V naught sin omega t and V naught cross B, this is V naught cross B divided by magnitude of V naught cross B. So, this is the final velocity we will have. Basically, you can do this problem by using the writing equation of motion and then you can solve differential equation for x, y, z direction, but that will be a tedious task. You see, if I apply, if I try to see what is the overall motion, it's a good idea to see the overall motion. So, if you see the overall motion, how it will look? So, it's a spiral kind of thing, it's a easy. So, this will go something like this. So, this is moving along this line. But it is also moving in the y direction, are you getting? So, it is also moving. So, this will having a, a spiral path. So, you will have in something like this kind of thing. So, situation is something like this. So, it is moving in x z plane, but slowly, slowly it also moving along the y direction. So, it is also moving in the y direction. So, I have to make something like this so that you can understand. So, this is also moving in the y direction. So, the motion is a spiral kind of thing or you can say shifted helix. Are you getting or not? So, this is a peach. Somebody say find out the peach of this post problem. You can find out the peach because you know the v velocity v vector. V vector, you know the time period. So, you can calculate peach. So, you calculate yourself what is the peach. And this pitch should be constant. It should depend upon time or it should constant. It should depend upon time because velocity in the y direction depends upon time. So, pitch will be not constant, it has to be a function of time. So, calculate pitch as a function of time. Calculate pitch as a function of time. And you prove that this pitch is a variable, it is not constant pitch.